suspension bridge. This bridge has one, two, three towers and one, two spans. The span is the distance between two towers. The reason I need this tower is because my bridge is very long. It's actually 10 feet from this tower to that tower. It's almost 10 feet. And um, if this weren't here, then the bridge wouldn't be stable. In real suspension bridges, especially when the bridge is very long, they have towers like this. Sometimes even more than one. So now, this car is, um, is very heavy and I'll put it on the bridge. So the car is putting weight on the bridge, just transferring the load to these cables, which are called hangers. And they're on both sides. The hangers are then under tension. They transfer the tension to these cables, which run all the way across the bridge from one tower to the other tower. And they also cross the middle tower. So um, these cables are under tension too. Um, they transfer some tension to the anchors, which are then also under tension. The anchors in this case are the books and, and the chair legs which are together. Oh, so um, these towers are under compression from the river floor or from whatever's under them, they're under compression. The compression counterbalances the tension from the cables and that balances the bridge. This also happens on each side. So um, there's also compression on this side, which also ba helps balance the bridge. Now let's see how strong this bridge is. So I'll take my car and put it here and drive my car across. So you can see that this bridge is very strong because the car drove all the way across and it barely sagged. 